Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Hi, I'm Kenny Yates and welcome to Hold to Hope. This is our weekly message and today is a special Sunday when we remember fathers. We have set aside every third Sunday in June to honor fathers. And to me, I feel it's very, very important that we do. Why? Because I believe there's an attack on men in general and fathers in specific. I believe that they're trying to, to, to feminize men. They're trying to take away our masculinity and make us more feminine. If you don't believe that they're, that they're trying to do that to feminize men and feminize, feminize the things that are identified as male, just, just do some research for yourself. Search the difference in the army recruitment ads for the different nations. Type into your search engine Russia versus China versus US Army recruitment ads and you will see exactly what it is that I'm talking about. Or, or listen to, to what Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the UK said about, about the, the, the subject. And this is what he said. He said that in order to build back better after the pandemic, we must build back greener. We must build back cleaner. We must build back gender neutral. We must build back more feminine. The link is provided below. Don't, don't, don't just take my word for it. Go and search it for yourself. It seems like society is trying to get fathers out of the home by portraying them as weak or as simple and incompetent, or just plain useless and unnecessary extra baggage to have just laying around. Look, look at almost any sitcom, almost any sitcom, or even almost any cartoon, and you'll see exactly what it is that I'm talking about. They're trying to strip men of their masculinity. They're trying to take away our masculinity and make it appear to be offensive, in a farce to be noble. They're calling it toxic masculinity. You can't be a real man if you're masculine. Too much masculinity is toxic and makes you irresponsible. Really? Really? Are, are, are you going to go there? Or are you trying to tell me that I have to lose my masculinity to be a responsible man? Do I have to act feminine to have a conscience or to know how to treat a female? They, they take a noble thing and they spin it and they attack men with it because they know. They know. But I'm sure it's all a part of their population control plan. I personally don't buy any Gillette product anymore. I, I, I banned them. I've stopped. And I'm just saying. I'm not a hater. I just don't. All right? Sorry. Because if, if I offended anyone, I just happen to like being a man. I am what you might call a map. M-A-P. Male and proud. I will not let haters shame me into being feminine. I feel it a privilege to be a man. And a woman, you should be feel, feeling privileged to be a woman. If, if a man can dress and act like a woman and be proud, I can dress and act like a man and be prouder. I love being a man. Fathers, let, let us not let them break up our homes. Let us leave a godly inheritance for our children and our children's children. Let us teach our sons to be godly um, masculine men and our daughters to be godly feminine women. Let us hold our homes and our families together and not let a godless society shame us into looking and being something that God did not intend us to look like or act like. Let us all be what God would have us be. And if each father was to do that, it will last throughout all generations, one generation 
at a time. Let us win our families for Jesus. Men, we're better than that. We're better than letting losing to them, losing our masculinity to them, and letting us shame us into being something that God did not intend us, intend us to be. Our message today is entitled, A Godly Inheritance. So turn with me to the scripture, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. And this is what it says. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. This scripture might be talking about financial inheritance in general, but it can be applied spiritually and to a spiritual inheritance. A father leaves a godly inheritance to his children and to his grandchildren. As I said in my introduction, a good man teaches his son to be a real man, a masculine man. He teaches him responsibility. He teaches him manners. He teaches him how to treat other people, how to treat women by being an example for him, by showing him how, not just telling him, but showing him how, by the way you treat your, his mother, your wife. A good father teaches his daughter what to expect from a man, how she should expect to be treated. You set the bar of expectation for that young man who would eventually date your daughter. So that when she goes out on her date, she knows how she's supposed to be treated. And she insists on being treated that way. My youngest daughter uh, was told by a male classmate that her standards were too high for any guy to reach. She probably replied, you're just upset that you don't reach those expectations. And I refuse to lower them for anyone. She often tells me that when she pictures what, what she wants in a man and how she wants to be treated, she holds him to how I treat her mother. And if, she fall, and if he falls short in any way, then he doesn't make the cut. She said that I've taught her her worth through the way I have treated her as my daughter and how I've treated her mother, my wife. And let me just say that you cannot do that going out every night with the boys and drinking and carousing and having your side thing. That does not make you a man. Good fathers don't just go out there having children all over the place. A baby mama here, a baby mama there. A good father plans his children in the confines of holy matrimony. Now, if you're, you've already have children outside of marriage, that's in the past. I'm not condemning you, but I am asking you to be a man. Be there for your children as much as possible. But maybe their mother has moved on. Maybe it's complicated. But seek God, and he will lead you in what to do. All I'm saying is, men, we have to take back our homes. We have to take back our families. We have to take back our children. They are our seed. They belong to us. They are our inheritance. We will not let an ungodly man and ungodly women and propaganda cartoons and TV shows or decisive co companies indoctrinate our children with heresy, division, disrespect, and hate. We will not have it. Men, our children need us to lead. They need us to guide. We, they need us to cheer on and encourage them. They are looking to us and out of us. Be an example and don't let men hate and home wrecking mammon serving companies and godless society speak for you. Do not let them teach your children ungodly values. You teach your children godly values. They will not depart and our society will be much better for it. And let me just say that our children are 
looking to you, fathers. Your children are looking to you for guidance. Apparently, it is a fact that, that as a child matures, he or she will increasingly look to their father, not their mother, but to their father as a role model in processing decisions and adopting values. That's why you need to be an active, uh, be active in your child's life. You need to be an example that they see because if you're not there, they will get their mentor in someplace else. And God, help us where? That alone should make every man, every father shudder and consider, have I set a good example for my children? Did I give my child the tools they need? Not only do they need that they need, but that they look to me to provide for them so that they can make quality, godly decisions and adopt godly quality values. What you believe and what you value, you have taught your children, whether in word or in action, whether you realize it or not, you have taught them by example. My youngest daughter, and often butt heads, she, she and I, we're often butt heads, but when I look at her, I see so much of myself in her. She watches everything I do. I have to be very careful with my reactions and the way I present myself around her because I am her biggest influence. She's influenced by me. And this isn't just me bigging myself up. This is what she told me not too long ago. And, and she, she does what I do. What she sees me doing, she does. When she, what, what, when she hears me pray, she prays. She tries to pray just like me. When she teaches anything in the Bible, she makes sure that she uses two or three witnesses or whatever it is that um, she, she, she's trying to do. She does because that's the way I do it. Our children are watching us, man. Not just our sons, but our daughters as well. And again, I, I'm not just saying that 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 because my daughter, to be honest, her mother is her favorite, but she gets her, her, her um, training from me. She watches me. She tries to mimic me, the way that I teach the Bible, the way that, that um, I study. And if I, if I teach her something in the Bible, she, she gravitates to that. We have to be so careful as men. So we need to set an example. Fathers, you have taught your sons how to treat someone else's daughter by the way you treat his mother, your wife. You have also taught your daughter the kind of treatment she should expect from her husband when she marries by the way you treat her and the way you treat her mother, your wife. If you have treated her mother or their mother like garbage, then that is the value your son will probably set for women and your daughter will probably set for herself. If you have treated her like your princess, then more than likely that's the value that your son will set for his wife, for women. And your daughter will desire to have because they saw the example that you set. Children, children live out the example of home, or at least what they have experienced at home. It is said that hurt people hurt people. It's what they know. It's what they are used to. And it is what they were taught, if you will. But if that is true, if all of that that I just said is true, then the opposite must be equally true. Kind people then will be kind. If you teach your children values then, and, and value people, then they will value people if they're treated with value. We must 
leave her children a godly inheritance by her actions. It is something that God has hardwired in each and every child. That is why parenting is so very important. And we cannot let the school board system proselytize our children with their hatred, racism, and division. Neither can, can, can you be an absentee father and expect your wife to do all of the heavy lifting at home with the children. It does not work, and it will not work. I want you to look at this. Listen. Where the father is indifferent, inadequate, or just plain absent, the task of maturing in a responsible manner becomes that much harder for the child. These are studies done by professionals. And the spiritual effect of fatherlessness on a child is horrific. It's horrendous. Take a look at these statistics I heard. Statistics show that if a father does not go to church, but only the mother goes to church, one child in 50 will be a regular worshiper. That is one child in 50. Now take a look at the opposite. The opposite. If a father attends church, but the mother does not, 66% of children will also attend church. The chances of a child going to church has increased exponentially with the dad going to church. Not sending the child with mom, but taking his children to church. Fathers, those are staggering statistics. Our hearts should be moved by compassion uh, for our children. And we should think, have I set a good example for my child by taking them to church? Have I made church important? I want you to take a look at another statistic. Where both mom and dad attends church, there is a likelihood of 75% of the children being regular church attenders. That is three out of four. It has gone from one in 50 to three in four. Is that not an amazing and frightening all at the same time? Fathers, I encourage you, gather your families together. Take them to church. Believe me, I believe that we will be held responsible and accountable to God for, for, for falling down on this job is very important. The bottom line is this. Whatever is important to you will be important to your family. If you treat church like a second class citizen or an inconvenience, they will feel the same way. Church is not important. It is an inconvenience. And my daddy said so. Give your children a godly inheritance. It will last all eternity. Now there are always exceptions. When I was growing up, my parents were not churchgoers. They sent us kids to Sunday school and they, they attended Christmas programs and such. Uh, but I accepted Jesus before my parents. I accepted Jesus before my sister. So there are exceptions but it is not the rule. The rule is one in 50. Well, maybe I was that one in 50. Well, thank the Lord that I was. But not everyone is going to be that one in 50. There's only one in 50. That is the rule. So what happens to the 49? Maybe I should preach a message on the 49. It is not a chore to go to, 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 to church. There are benefits. I want you to turn with me to two portions of scripture. One in Deuteronomy and one in Psalms. So first, Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 29. And I'm going to read from the NLT. The New Living Translation. Oh that they would always have hearts like this. That they might fear me and obey all my commands. 
If they did, they and their descendants would prosper forever. God wants to prosper us and our children and their children and their children and their children forever. But fathers, it starts with us. We are to train up our children. We're to train them in the things of God. We're to teach them the things of God. Look at at what God said about Abraham. Genesis chapter 18, verse 18 through 19. And this is God. He said, For Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. I have singled him out so that he will direct. And the ESV and the King James Version says, Command his his sons and their families to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Then... I will do for Abraham all that I have promised. It is not a choice. Abraham was to command his son and their families. It's not like, do you feel like going to church today, honey? Oh, no, your favorite fo- football team is playing. Oh, okay, sure, honey, stay home today and watch the game. And we'll catch service next, next week, Sunday. Okay, sweetie. No, it's not like that at all. It's not like that. It's, it's like this. This is my house. And for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. End of conversation. We're done here. We're going to church. What else did you notice in that scripture? Did you notice that the promise only came after Abraham commanded his sons and their families. This is what it said. Then I will do for Abraham all that I have promised. End of quote. Understand that the promise was Abraham's, but he had to do something. This, if God has it for me, then then nothing can stop it. No, 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 no. You have to do something. If God has it for me, then that, that, that thing, not, nothing can stop it, is wrong. You, you yourself, you can stop it by being disobedient, by not doing what God expects you to do. And so it is for us, our promise, the promises are ours. But first, we must teach our children, we must teach their families to keep the way of the Lord, our God, and then he will do for us as he promised. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God does not change. He is not a grandfather. He is our father. He does not just give out presents. He blesses us with good things, but we have to be diligent in the things of God. Turn with me to Psalms 103, verse 1 through 5. This is what it says. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So what are these benefits? Go on to um, verse 3. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who healed all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. These are our benefits. These are our promises. We can receive them if only we are passionate, if only we are sincere, if only we would teach our children uh, the ways of God and the things of God. Teach them how to be Christians. And not just in name only, but in word and in deed. We cannot be wishy-washy. We must be consistent. We must be passionate. If it is important, then you must treat it as important. If we're going to leave a godly inheritance, then it's imperative that fathers train up their children in the way that they should go. So that when they're old, they will know how to act and they will know how to choose. It's not about you. It's not about earthly wealth or earthly things. It's all about God. It's all about eternity. 
Are you training up your children for eternity? Are you teaching them how to, to prepare for eternity? Or are you only training them about the here and now, the temporal, those things that will soon pass away, they will soon be gone? Look at the parable Jesus told in Luke chapter 12, verse 13 through 21. Then someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and, and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. You will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. As I have been saying, it's not about things. It's not even about you. It's all about God. It's all about eternity. Find peace with God and teach your family to do the same. There's nothing wrong with having wealth. There's nothing wrong with that. There is, however, though, something wrong with, 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 with having wealth at the expense of your own soul. That, that when your soul is required of you, then what will you do? What will you give in exchange for your soul. All the wealth in the world will not profit you when it comes to eternity, when it comes to standing before God. Make yourself rich in the things of God. Fathers, we have to leave a godly inheritance for our children. We have to teach them by having conversations with them. We must talk about it. We must read about it. Take out your Bible, dust it off. Read the scriptures out loud with your family. It's a biblical mandate. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 9. It says, listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. You must commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands. Wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Repetition breeds success. The more you repeat it, the more you believe it. The more you believe it, the more you will live it. Talk about scripture. Talk about your family values. Even talk about your hopes and your dreams for your family. So in closing, in closing, I want to tell you a story. I remember several years ago. It's been a while now. But there was a family sitting in the booth. We were in a restaurant, a family sitting in the booth, booth next, to, next to us. And it seemed like they were on vacation. They, they, they were all excited, and, and they were talking. They were talking pretty loud, so it was no problem hearing their conversation. They might wanted others to hear the conversation because they seemed they were a well-to-do family. And the young woman, who seemed to be like in her 20s, was saying how proud she was and how privileged she felt having her father's blood running through her veins. Which is excellent. That's a good thing. We should all feel proud of who we are and where we came from. We should be proud of our families. 
And this young woman was extra proud. But I couldn't help but wonder, are you also proud of the blood of Jesus? I know you're proud of your father's blood, but are you proud of the blood of Jesus, the blood that will save your mortal soul, the blood that was shed for you to, you, for you to have life? Are you proud of that blood? Yes, you seem very proud of your earthly heritage, and that's great. But did your dad also give you a godly heritage? Which, I might add, is much, much better by far. So I'm asking you today, did your father leave you a godly inheritance? I'm asking you, fathers, are you leaving your children your grandchildren, a godly inheritance. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. If you don't have a godly inheritance, and you would like to start it now, if you would like to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, if you would like to accept what he did for you on Calvary and have his royal blood running through your veins that you might live forever. I invite you to take Jesus today as Lord and Savior. How? Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Help me to live for you. I accept the free gift of salvation. I thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I accept it. Apply it to my life, Lord. Wash me. Purge me that I might be clean. Take me as your child and you be my father and my God. And Lord, help me to live for you that when you come back, I'll hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now enter in. And I give you thanks, I give you praise, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I would suggest that you buy yourself a Bible. And you read your Bible every day. I suggest you get a highlighter. Highlight the promises. Highlight the, the, the verses that stand out to you. Highlight those verses that encourage you. Highlight those verses that help you to leave an inheritance to your children and to your children's children. And memorize those verses. Guys, I believe there's coming a time that we won't be able to have scriptures anymore. And only what we've hidden in our hearts will we have. So memorize these scriptures. Then you find yourself a Bible-believing church. A church that still believes in holiness, still preaches righteousness. That still preaches that a man should be masculine and a woman feminine. A church that honors mothers and honors fathers. Join that church. Let them disciple you. Be a part of it. Work in that church and grow in that church. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is that he's called you to do. And he will take you to be with him. And you'll live forever and ever. Thank you for joining me. I want to say again, happy Father's Day to all you men, all you fathers out there. Happy Father's Day. May the Lord bless you. I'm Kenny Yates. This has been Hold to Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.